Many people think that losing weight is pretty straightforward, which is understandable as it's basically just calories in versus calories out, right? The problem with this assumption though, is that dieters will frequently underestimate their calories in while overestimating their calories out, making the figures on the weighing scale not seem to budge often, no matter what they try. So getting an optimal balance between intake and exertion to reach significant process weekly on that scale reading does require the know-how of several strategies to ensure we're burning more calories than we're consuming daily. Therefore today we'll be touching on 9 fundamentals of successful weight loss. But first, as always, please take note of our disclaimer. First and foremost, knowing how to get a ballpark of the number of calories you should have daily for safe but meaningful weight loss is necessary. For simplicity's sake, the easiest way to get an idea of this is to use an online calculator that does this for you by just entering in your age, sex, height, weight and activity level. I have included a nice one in the description of this video. We don't recommend calculating calories over the long term though, as it could lead you to have an unhealthy relationship with food. That said, it's undoubtedly a good idea in the short term as it will allow you to become more aware of what foods and drinks you should and shouldn't be having often, along with the appropriate amounts of them. Now that we have a rough idea of how to ensure we're burning more calories than we're taking in, what's some examples of the types of food that we should or shouldn't be taking in? Well, examples of these foods can be broken down into a go, slow and woe food list, with go referring to foods that you should include that are great for feelings of fullness, slow involving ones that are okay but in moderation, and woe relating to foods high in calories that contribute to cravings later on that you should do your best to steer clear of as best as you can. Here is a basic example of these foods. If you'd like a more comprehensive list, I will include the link to my resource in the description also. Of course, no food list can include every type of food and drink. That's one reason why it's important to know how to read a nutrition label so that you can decide for yourself which category another particular one should fall within. Besides keeping on top of your calories, getting fluent with food labels allows you to keep bad trans or saturated fats, added sugar, sodium and cholesterol in line, gives you a better idea of how much filling nutrients, whether protein, fiber or healthy unsaturated fat, accompanies the food, and how much vitamins and minerals are present that support your overall health. We've actually done a whole video on how to understand nutrition labels for weight loss, which you can find a link to in the top right hand corner of the screen, that I definitely recommend checking out. Water consumption is another thing to keep in mind regarding nutrition and successful weight management. Indeed, everyone knows that water is vital for overall health as we are made of it. But there are also two other reasons why it helps dieting. Firstly, people frequently only consider their calories from food. Yet the calories from fizzy drinks, store-bought coffees, orange juice, etc. can accumulate, leading to a substantial proportion of your overall daily calories. So by concentrating on getting more water in, you'll automatically forgo the needless calories from these drinks and help weight. Then secondly, since the brain often misinterprets feelings of thirst for hunger, having water 20 minutes before breakfast, lunch and dinner allows your brain sufficient time to process the filling signals and consequently helps control how much food is on your plate. The amount of water you should consume varies depending on the source, as well as from person to person for that matter, but a good target is 64 ounces or around 8 cups daily. Now that we have an idea of weight loss nutrition, it's a good idea to start progressively adjusting the presence of certain foods and drinks in your household with each shopping trip. This is very helpful since so much of what we eat daily is determined by just the plain availability of it. Admittedly, this is easier said than done as for many of you there will be other people in the household to take into account too. If this is the case, try sitting down with them outlining your goals, how this would be helpful for you as well as for them for that matter, and seeing where there may be an area for opportunity, even if it's only one or two minor adjustments every couple of weeks. This is where the importance of dialogue and compromise comes in. On a side note, if you are interested in undertaking our evidence-based and results-backed personalised Plato weight management programme, 
please click the link in the top right hand corner of the video or follow the link in the description. Moreover, for any successful weight loss endeavor, portion control is key. This is ensuring you're not overdoing at meals or while snacking and is so important to work on since going up for seconds at a meal or having portions on your plate twice as big as they should is essentially doubling your calories from that sitting alone. Here are 9 tips to help with portion control. If you'd like a more thorough explanation on how these tips work, please watch our video in the top right hand corner of the screen. Then we have meal prepping. Probably the easiest but one of the most effective ways of moving down a gene size. Meal prepping not only saves you time, money, effort and stress, it also helps better portion sizes, enhances the likelihood that you'll have 3 meals daily to help reduce cravings between meals and late in the evenings, and as we can all agree, can aid in avoiding negative last minute lapses in nutritional decision making of what to have for dinner that can easily happen after a hard long day's work when you're tired and want something easy. And meal prepping doesn't just have to be for dinner either. You can also do it for breakfast and lunch. Just be easier on yourself and take it one step at a time. Furthermore, it's no surprise that the calories and alcoholic drinks aren't great for weight especially because you don't provide any filling benefits simultaneously. But there are other indirect, often less considered negative influences on dieting that alcohol brings about. These include lowering your inhibitions and making you more prone to making bad dietary decisions or eating more than you should, alongside the physical inactivity and less than ideal food choices that arise from feeling malaise the following days if you overdo it. Alcohol also gets in the way of a good sleep routine, not to mention the overall quality of it. Proper sleep is essential when dieting as it is when our appetite hormones get regulated to desirable levels. Ensure that we have adequate energy levels during the hours we spend awake, that we are functioning cognitively at a high level to make better diet related choices, and simply because more time asleep means fewer opportunities to snack. That said, sleeping too much isn't good either. So aim for no more or less than between 7 and 9 hours nightly. Anyway, in light of both these direct and indirect drawbacks from alcohol for body weight, it's self-explanatory why we should seek lower calorie choices in moderation, such as light beer, vodka soda and lime, or sparkling rosé, and limit drinking to occasionally while on a weight loss diet. Now that we have touched on the fundamentals surrounding weight loss intake, let's discuss expenditure. The American College of Sports Medicine recommends 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week for overall health. While on a weight loss diet though, it's a good idea to aim for a type of exercise that gets you to your target heart rate zone, where you get the most caloric bang for your buck from your workouts. But of course, this depends on your functional health. The type of exercise you do will be completely up to you, but try to go for one that you like doing whether it be playing football with some friends or just you in the gym weightlifting. If vigorous movement is a problem for you, 10,000 steps one or two days per week is a good alternative to start off with. One session takes approximately an hour and a half to do and burns around 400 to 500 calories. Also, it's a good idea to get a check up with a doctor before starting any new exercise regimens, if just starting out, to be as safe as we can. Have you any other tips for successful weight management? We'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. Additionally, if you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. So that has been our video. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.